Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody. We're just getting started. People just are getting just... started. People are coming in the room. So we're going to let uh, that happen now as folks come in. Happy Thursday afternoon. I'm Cheryl Toth, co-owner of Air Gear, and welcome Airstreamers to this webinar on solar and lithium. Are they right for you? They... And he is going to answer that question, hopefully, for you by the end of this hour. Rich Luer has a bunch of stuff prepared for you. You and I have been really living, living. solar and lithium a lot we, lately, right? We in have. We have. Pasadena, in uh, yeah. Arizona, a couple places. So um, we add to that all the research that Rich has been doing on the uh, second edition of the maintenance guide for Airstream okay. owners. Well, the nearly complete. Nearly complete guide to Airstream maintenance. Okay, I always get that. Which is coming out in uh, early March. Great, great. Um, and by the way, they can pre-order that you book. You can pre-order a copy uh, if you go to airstreamlife.com slash book. Forward slash book. We'll yeah. put that in the notes somewhere uh, for this recording. Um, but before I turn things over for this presentation with Rich, I want to remind everyone that we're recording today and we'll post this on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Also, a number of you sent questions ahead of this webinar and we've weaved those in. We're answering most of them. Yeah, all of them. Uh, pretty much all the questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you want to send a, submit a question during this webinar, you can look at the bottom of your tray, uh, the Zoom tray. There's a Q and A, um, right? You're going to click that and open it. Chat or something like that. I'm not sure. It says Q and A. Q and A. Yeah. Okay. Q and A, and you can enter your question in there. Um, and then uh, what's the last thing? Oh, well, this hmm. webinar is made possible ah. by Air Gear. Right. That's our our store. Um, we sell maintenance, safety, and upgrade solutions for Airstream owners and RVers. And we appreciate all of you who are customers on this uh, webinar today for letting us do these kinds of webinars. Yeah. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Rich Luer. If you don't recognize this bearded guy, um, he is the first and foremost, the publisher of Airstream Life magazine for 19, 19 years. Now. 19 years. Mm. Um, author of the books I mentioned, um, and also the newbie's guide to Airstreaming and the co-founder of uh, Airgear. Yep. So let's talk lithium. Let's talk solar and lithium. And solar. Okay, let me get my act together here. And while you do that, <laughs> I'm going to escape over where people check the Q&A on the other computer. How's that? Uh, okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> so she'll be taking care of that kind of thing. Uh, so yes, as, as Tothi said, uh, we're uh, Airgear and Airstream Life. We do a monthly uh, little program that we just started called Ask Airgear. And um, we collect questions from people. If you email them to ask at airgear.store, uh, we'll, we may be able to answer your question in one of our future videos, which will be about once a month, I think, is when we're going to do it. So um, let me talk to you about solar and lithium. Um, the, the key thing here is that I am not going to give you a technical talk. Okay, This is not going to be all about engineering. I'm not going to teach you how to make a solar or uh, lithium setup, um, because that gets into a lot of numbers. And really what we want to do here is answer your common questions, help you make the right choices for your camping style and your personal ambitions, what you want to do with your ocean, what do you want to get out of it. And along the way, uh, we'll bust a few myths. The simplicity here, uh, the, the emphasis here is going to be on simplicity, not engineering. So I just want to make it easy for you. And if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat window and Tothi will pick up some of the questions as we go along. We'll try to answer all as many of them as we can. Okay, so let's get going here. Um, the two key questions that everybody wants to answer is, should you get or add lith solar panels? Most modern Airstreams these days are coming with solar panels. So the question becomes for a newer owner, uh, do you need more capacity? For somebody who has an older Airstream, maybe not, doesn't have any solar on the roof or any so portable solar, um, might want to be wondering uh, if this is the time to add it. And of course, the second question is, should you upgrade to lithium? Uh, again, some new Airstreams are coming with lithium. It's a choice of the buyer these days. Um, but for the rest of us, we need to think about whether or not this is something that makes sense for us. Solar and lithium are fundamentally changing the game for off-grid camping. They give you more time away from hookups, more freedom to camp where you want to be, and um, with the rise in electric devices that are being put into Airstream, such as electric refrigerators and people using more laptops and other devices, we really need more power in our Airstreams than we did 10 or 20 years ago. So uh, solar and lithium really rise to the top of decisions that Airstreamers need to make. Most new Airstreams are coming with 
uh, 180 to 300 watts of solar on the roof, depending on which model you buy. Some don't have any at all. But um, the question, again, is for those people is whether or not you really need more solar than that amount. What's the right amount? It's a really good question. So let's start with the solar part. Break this piece down here. Well, I'm going to dig into what solar is good for, um, kind of the, a little bit about the costs and the size and type of system you need to have. But first, we need to talk about what solar does. Solar does one thing, charges the batteries. We get a lot of people asking us this question, what can you run on solar? And the answer is nothing. Nothing runs directly from the solar panels. The solar uh, panels are collecting energy from the sun and putting it into the batteries. And the batteries are powering the things that you're using. So the answer is uh, what runs on solar is whatever runs on 12 volt. And that includes things like the fans, the uh, furnace, lights, water pump, uh, and the inverter. The inverter being the device, it's not installed in every Airstream, but the inverter being the device that turns 12 volt into 120 volt. So you can plug in appliances like uh, laptop computers. So those are the things that run off of 12 volt, that run off the batteries, which means that the solar panels can boost the batteries and keep those things running longer. The next question becomes whether or not you want to get a rooftop or a portable solar system. And I'm a big advocate of both, to be honest with you. Um, they have their advantages. The rooftop systems um, are, well, we'll get into that in the next slide. Um, first of all, though, I just want to say that with rooftop, we have flexible panels that adhere to the roof, like you see in the picture on the left. And on um, they also have rigid panels on the roof, which are you know going to not fit to the curvature of the roof. People often ask which one's better. It's really often most often the choice of the installer who does it. You can certainly express a preference. I don't have a strong preference. Um, I think the the rigid panels tend to hold up a little bit longer. Um, but uh, the jury may be out on that one as the technology continues to improve. So rooftop solar. The big advantage here is that it's on the roof. It's always on. You never have to think about it. You don't have to flip a switch. You don't have to put anything out. It's always charging the Airstream whenever the sun is shining. And because it's mounted on the roof, it's kind of theft resistant. So those are the big advantages of rooftop. Always there. The downside of rooftop is pretty big. It's expensive because there's a lot of labor involved in mounting these panels and running the wires through the walls and the various things that have to be done, it tends to increase the cost way beyond the cost of the panels. So you're paying for a lot of labor when you do rooftop solar. The other big disadvantage of rooftop solar is that you can't tilt those panels. They're fixed in their position. And that means they're a lot less efficient. You might buy, say, 400 watts of solar power. And uh, the reality is, is when the sun is low in the sky, the sun is rising or the sun is setting, those panels are facing more or less straight up. And so they aren't really getting much sun until the, until the middle of the day. Because you can't tilt those panels, they're effectively a lot smaller in capacity than they would seem. You might have 400 watts theoretically on the roof, but it might act like a system that's only half that size because the panels can't be tilted towards the sun. And the other big problem with rooftop solar is that if you find a nice shady spot to put your Airstream in, uh, you don't have any solar. You're, you're completely lost out on the advantage of having solar because you wanted shade. And so that's a, that's a big, uh, big problem with, with rooftop. Portable solar solves that problem. It, uh, it allows you to put it uh, wherever you want it. So you can angle it towards the sun and get a lot more power in the morning and the afternoon, which effectively makes the panels more efficient for you. It's also a lot cheaper to install. If you apples to apples compare rooftop versus portable, portable is always going to come out cheaper because there's no labor cost involved. You just plug it in. You have, sure, of course, there's your, your own labor because every day you want to set it up, you want to use it, you have to go out there and set it up. And it takes a couple of minutes to do that. Not a big deal. Uh, but that's the trade-off. You can uh, set up polar, portable solar in a couple of minutes, and you'll have great effectiveness in the morning and in the afternoon, but you do have to set it up. It's not always on. And also, there's a theft issue. Um, I wouldn't leave my expensive portable solar panels sitting out in the campground unattended while I'm not around. 
Uh, and there's really no practical way to lock these things up that that's not going to be easily defeated by somebody. You can put a chain on it, but yeah, you know, not really something that can be locked up effectively. So that's the other downside of portable solar. Um, before I go any further, yes. I can access any I need access. Oh, okay. So right now, I don't know if anybody has yeah, questions. So I'm going to go into Zoom for a second here and just take a look at the chat window <laughs> and see see what we've got in the Q and A here. A um, couple of comments from people. Susan says, Nest has curved fiberglass roof. Any specific recommendations I need, uh, given I need new batteries? Oh, that's too broad. <laughs> but I would say that because it has a curved fiberglass roof, well, all airships have curved roofs. It's really not a big deal. You can still mount rigid or flexible panels. Um, let's see here. Jeffrey Taylor um, says, we're planning to take our Airstream on a ferry ride. How long will the battery power last to run the refrigerator? Well, they have to be a really long ferry uh, to run out of power. Um, typically, batteries in your Airstream are going to power you for a couple of days. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about that one. Um, let's see. Martin asks uh, about lithium batteries. We'll get to that in a minute. Brian asks about, will the battery run the power awning? Yes, a good question. Brian, yes, battery does run the power awning on an Airstream. It is a 12-volt device. You do not have to be plugged in for that to work. Um, let's see, a couple of other questions here. Uh, I'm going to answer the rest of these questions while we talk, um, except for one more from Bodie, I think it is, Bodil Larson. And uh, the question is, does the solar panel not acquire energy while driving? And the answer is the solar panels work all the time, even while you're driving. So there's no problem with that. All right, there's more questions, but I'm going to set them aside for a minute because I've got to get back to my presentation and then we'll... Uh, We'll uh, try to address the rest of those questions a little bit later. Let's take a look here. Um, so one of the questions that people typically will ask is, how much solar capacity do I need? And so I'm just, there's no hard and fast answer to this. There just isn't. Um, but what I can do is give you a few scenarios of typical situations and what I think is a ballpark amount of solar that would fit each one of those scenarios. So let's rock through those. Um, first one being uh, the person who just says, look, I just don't want my batteries to die while the Airstream's in storage. I don't really plan on boondocking, but I hate it when I put my Airstream in storage and the batteries die. So um, it, I've got some numbers here on this slide about how much battery power uh, an Airstream typically uses. Your mileage may vary, um, but the gist of it is, is that you got it maybe a couple of weeks before the batteries die, even with the battery disconnect in the store position. Uh, so if this is your goal, I'd recommend you get at least 90 watts of solar capacity on the roof and preferably a little bit more. If you're going to go ahead and put rooftop on, you might as well put on as much as you can afford. Uh, but at least 90 watts should be able to keep your batteries from going dead, assuming you get a reasonable amount of sunshine uh, where you live. Um, if you live in the cloudy northeast or northwest, and you don't get a lot of, you know, you're storing it in the winter time, and there isn't a lot of sun, it's cloudy all the time, 90 watts may not be enough for you. But down here in the Southwest, we, we live in Arizona, uh, that would be more than enough, assuming that we're, of course, not undercover. Next scenario, the guy who says, so the couple who says, I want long weekends without hookups. I want to be able to camp three, four nights, and I want to boondock, and I don't want to run out of power while I'm doing that. Now you're into a higher capacity. Um, as many of you have discovered, after a couple of nights, the batteries uh, typically installed in the Airstream, if they're lead acid, will go dead. Um, so in this case, I would recommend somewhere between 160 and the 300 watts of capacity on the roof. And that could be either, uh, sorry, either rooftop or portable or a combination of both, but somewhere in that range, just to extend your time. Uh, now I'm making a couple of assumptions here. I'm assuming that you have a later model Airstream and it's got an electric refrigerator, which uses a lot of power. Uh, any 2021 later Airstream is going to have an electric refrigerator. Um, and you don't spend a lot of time on the laptop. You're not working from your, um, from your uh, Airstream. And it's not winter time. So this is definitely a ballpark for people who are in this spot, which is sort of typical for most people. 160 to 300 watts is enough power to boost your batteries. The goal here is not to get to 100% every single day. It's simply to make your batteries effectively larger, give you a bit more time uh, to camp in the sun. Now, for the extreme user, 
somebody who's really, really into it, uh, who says, I love boondocking. I want to boondock as much as I can and as far as I can. You're going to be in the high range. Typically, people in this scenario will, will put anywhere between 300 and 500 watts of solar capacity. And if they're smart, they're going to do it in a combination of rooftop and portable. That's to give you the most flexibility. One of the questions was from Kevin was, can I use both? And yes, Kevin, the answer is you can use both. Um, you can, uh, the two systems will work together. The portable panels will have their own charge controller. The rooftop panels will have their own charge controller. They will all feed into the battery. And the beauty of that is if you have uh, sun on the Airstream, the rooftop panels will do their job. If you don't have sun on the Airstream, but there's sun over a patch away, the portable panels will do their job. And if you have sun in both places, they're both going to do their job. So you've really got flexibility and a lot of power here. And people who are in the situation will also want to get lithium batteries. So let's, uh, let's get a little bit further into that. Before I get into lithium, though, I want to talk about a backup option. If you're into um, some, a lot of boondocking, and you love to do it, uh, I would seriously consider car generator. Car generator is basically a high quality inverter that connects to your tow vehicle. And by idling the engine, which doesn't hurt the tow vehicle, uh, you can power the Airstream with this 1000 watt inverter. And if you're only an occasional user, most of the time you're living off of solar, a car generator makes a ton of sense because it doesn't have to be maintained like a generator. You don't have to start it up every month. You don't have to carry around fuel. It only takes up a little bit of space. It's much smaller than any generator. It's cheaper than any generator. And it's basically going to do a really good job at charging your batteries. Plus, it has extra capacity for you to be able to do things like run your laptop at the same time. So I like uh, car generator. We sell it at Air Gear, so perhaps I'm a little biased, but we, we only sell things that we think actually work and we like this product. So uh, check out car generator as a backup if you're a hardcore solar user for those occasional cloudy days when things just don't go your way. Now, to go with solar, lithium has become, uh, in my mind, a must have uh, thing. It is rapidly becoming the gold standard for RVs. And the reason is because we're all using a lot more power than we used to, and especially with these electric compressor refrigerators coming in. They will eat your batteries alive in just a couple of days. So lithium is the solution. Most of us are going to go to lithium in the next few years if we haven't done it already, unless you have a vintage trailer that has very low power needs and you don't run laptops and things like that. Most of us are going to need the higher power density that a lithium battery provides. And I'll explain to you what I mean by power density. Essentially, I'm talking about how much power can you fit into a given space? Lithium batteries pack more power into the same footprint of battery than lead acid batteries do. So they are more power dense, up to three times as much power in the same space. So you begin to see the advantages of why lithium starts to make a lot of sense. Now, lithium versus lead acid. If you do the comparison, lead acid is a dinosaur. Lead acid wins on one count. It's cheap. It's cheaper. Even AGMs are cheaper than lithium batteries. Lithium batteries are admittedly expensive. They're going to cost you just six to $700 a piece, current prices, although the price does keep dropping. But in every other account, lithium iron phosphate batteries make more sense. They last longer. They're incredibly safe. They don't catch fire, by the way. We'll talk about that. They have much higher power density in the same footprint, and they're much lighter to boot. So lithium wins on just about every count except for cost. It is a premium expenditure for sure. Now, you notice I'm talking about lithium iron phosphate. Um, there is a difference between lithium ion and lithium iron phosphate. RVs use lithium iron phosphate, and I will explain that in more detail later, but I just want to make sure that that point is known. We're talking about a lithium ion phosphate. It's the only type that gets used in RVs. If you're going to go to lithium, a couple of things to think about. The 2023 model year and beyond, Airstream has caught on with the program. And so you don't have to make any hardware changes inside the Airstream to go to lithium. However, older Airstreams, not so much. You're going to have to make an upgrade to the power converter that's built into the Airstream. You may have to replace just the main board of it or you may have to completely replace the power converter depending on what year you have. I've got some details in my upcoming maintenance book, which you can get, again, you can pre-order the maintenance book from airstreamlife.com slash book. Um, and we've also got an article about it in the um, 
current issue, the spring issue of uh, Airstream Life that just came out, which I which I wrote. Um, so I know it's a great article. Uh, and uh, both of those talk a little bit more about the, the hardware changes that you would need to make if you decide to go to a lithium iron phosphate battery in your Airstream. The important thing to remember, though, is if you want to keep your cost down, get a battery that's the exact same size as the lead acid batteries that you're replacing. And they are readily available from major manufacturers like Battleborn and Radigy. Um, that way, the battery is a drop-in replacement. If you get into a situation where you have to modify the battery box or move the batteries under the couch or under the bed, it's going to get a lot more expensive and a lot more complicated. So a drop-in replacement is really what makes the most sense. The other thing about lithium that is, I think a lot of people overlook is that they're what I call smart. A lithium battery has a little computer inside it, basically, what they call a battery management system or a BMS. And that thing governs the power that goes in and out of the battery. So it has protections if it's short-circuited, if it's overcharged, if there's too much voltage, not enough voltage. These BMS in the uh, inside the battery, and it's built into all pretty much all decent RV lithium batteries, will protect that battery from being abused, which is one of the reasons why they last longer. Um, it's kind of like comparing to, you know, a, a, a lead acid battery is a dumb battery. It doesn't have any brain at all. If you abuse it, it's just going to take that abuse and it's going to die. It doesn't have any brains. It's kind of like uh, lead acid batteries are the landline. Um, and the lithium batteries are like an iPhone or an Android phone. They're just a whole lot smarter and uh, better in numerous ways. Okay, now to the questions. Um, I want to bust a couple of myths here. Let me see what the questions are and see if we've got any in, in the chat window before I go to that and just see what people are asking about here. Comment, let's see. Um, um, I think I'm going to get to these questions later. Boy, there's a lot of them, so I'll do what I can. Um, one of the questions that's really easy to get rid of is Tim asked, uh, will solar overcharge the batteries? Uh, no. The solar panels run through a charge controller, which protects the batteries. It ramps down the charge. When the batteries are full, it automatically shuts off. There's no danger of overcharging batteries on solar. Uh, let's see here. Ella asks, what exactly does a solar charge controller do? Well, that's what it does. It takes the voltage from the batteries and it converts it in, I'm sorry, it's the voltage from the solar panels. And it converts it into the proper voltage to charge the battery correctly. Whether you have a lead acid battery or a lithium battery, it's going to manage that voltage. You can't connect solar panels directly to a battery without a charge controller in, in between. That would be bad. That, that won't work. It'll hurt the batteries. So that's the function of the charge controller. Um, Zoom user, no name, says, by electric fridge, do you mean the compressor type? And yes, when I talk about the electric fridges, I'm talking about the compressor type. Um, let's see. There's a lot of batteries where people saying, hey, this is my situation. Would you comment on it? I'm sorry. I, I, I just can't <laughs> Not in, this, in this thing here. Um, let's see here. A couple of questions about lithium that we're going to get in here. Harry asks, can I combine lithium and AGM? The answer is no. They have different charging profiles. You want to do a complete conversion. You're either lead acid, uh, which includes AGM batteries, or your lithium, but you cannot mix the two. Um, let's see here. Ron asks, the new book that you're mentioning, um, is it replacing the book that comes with the new trailers? Um, no, it's a different book. The book that came with your trailer was the Newbie's Guide to Air Streaming. This is my maintenance guide. It's much longer. It's much more comprehensive. It's a totally different book. Um, so, And I recommend it if you like to do your own maintenance or just want to learn more about your, about your air stream. Um, so many more questions. Um, <laughs> I wish I could get to them all. Oh my goodness, there's just so many. Let's keep going here and I'll try to get to some more questions in a little bit here. Um, let's, oh, myth busting. And this is my favorite part of the seminar and this will answer a number of questions. One myth is that lithium batteries can't be stored at 100% charge without damage. In other words, you can't charge them up and leave them that way. It's bad for the batteries. No, that's a myth. Um, people are confusing lithium ion batteries, which are the kinds that are used in your laptop and in an e-bike and in your cell phone. Those are lithium ion batteries. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries. Totally different. They are not affected by being stored at 100%. That's not, that's a myth. So if anybody tells you that, just tell them, no, that's a lithium ion battery. That's different. This is lithium iron phosphate. Lithium batteries are a fire hazard. Just a couple of hours, Tony and I are laughing here because 
It was like three hours ago before somebody um is it right there? Yes. Okay. Somebody somebody sent us an email here and he says, I think you should probably point out the dangers of lithium batteries catching on fire. Last week in Glendale, Arizona, there were two electric bikes that caught on fire while charging in a garage, and I think it burned down the house. And I'm not sure. Are they safe for a trailer? I saw a Tesla in Utah completely consumed by fire in five minutes. I'm sticking with AGM. Well, don't worry. Uh, lithium batteries are not a fire hazard. This is a myth. Lithium ion can be. Those are the ones that are in the Tesla. Those are the ones that are in the e-bike. But again, these are lithium iron phosphate batteries. And one way, to, by the way, that, that's the chemical name there. L-I-F-E-P-O-4, lithium, F-E is iron, P-O-4 is phosphate. They, people just commonly call them LIFPO, LIFPO batteries. Because if you, lithium iron phosphate is such a mouthful. LIFPO batteries are totally different. The, the um, internal cathode is not, uh, is made of phosphate and it will not burn very easily. They don't have this thermal runaway problem that they have in lithium iron batteries. They're very unlikely to catch fire. So they are safe for RV uses. This is one of the reasons why we use this type of battery in an RV. Another myth, lithium batteries can't be used below freezing without heaters. Mm, partially true, but I'm still gonna call this one a myth. And the reason is because they're only limited to charge below freezing. You can use the batteries below freezing. They'll still supply power to your airstream all the way down to zero degrees. That's not a problem. But they won't take a charge below freezing. It's not good for the battery. And again, this is where the BMS comes to uh, rescue you. The BMS will prevent the battery from being charged below a certain temperature, somewhere between 25 and 32. It's going to shut off and say, I'm not going to let this battery be charged. So you can't hurt your battery by camping in freezing temperatures. It's not going to hurt it, uh, but it simply won't charge. You can get a type of battery that has a heater built in and Battleborn sells them and Renergy sells them. There's a number of brands that have them. They have little built-in heaters and that will give you more range. I don't think most people need the heaters. Um, if it's freezing at night, yes, your battery won't charge at night, but as soon as the sun comes out, if it's above freezing during the day, they'll start charging again. So unless you camp in freezing weather day and night, if it's freezing all day long, that's when you would need the heater and the battery. Uh, but for most people, that is overkill. So for example, we don't have it. We live in Arizona. Even though it does occasionally freeze at night, um, it's not really a problem. The battery just starts to charge when the sun comes up. So it's up to you. Um, adding the heaters typically costs some 40 to $50 per battery, something like that. So it's not a big expense if you want to go for it and just have that extra protection, but you do not have to have it. Okay, let me go back to some questions since we have so many and see if I've answered a few of them here. Um, so uh, Jim asked, is leaving the trailer plugged in do any damage to the lithium battery? And the answer is no, it will simply charge uh, fully and then it will stop charging and it won't do any harm battery. Uh, even if whether the battery disconnect switch is used or not, it really isn't going to make a difference there. Um, David asks, are AGM batteries different from lead acid? AGM batteries are lead acid batteries. They're just a different type. Instead of being filled with sulfuric acid, they're filled with sort of a gel or a paste, uh, but they are lead acid batteries. Uh, let's see here. Kevin says his dealer quoted him uh, Battleborn batteries. Battleborn are great batteries. Airstream uses them. Um, they are fine. Um, I personally went with Renogy, but I think uh, they're both very, very good manufacturers and they have a great reputation. So you'll have no trouble with your Battleborns. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. This is Lori. Wow, so many questions here. Um, Lori asks, what's the best cycle for plug plugging and allowing the solar to charge the batteries? Um, you don't need to do that. Um, if you have a plug, if you're plugged in, just leave the trailer plugged in. You don't need solar. The, the batteries will charge from the power cord. What we're talking about is when there's no power available, you can't plug in, then just let the solar do its job. It's automatic, it's silent, it's free. It doesn't need any intention from you whatsoever. It's a completely automatic system. Um, let's see here, Brian says this. Is car generator compatible with hybrid trucks? It is compatible with any truck that has an alternator and a battery. Um, and so yes, a hybrid truck would, would fit that, um, that need, I believe. Uh, but I would check with the owner's manual just to be sure. Maybe there's something I don't know about your truck. Um, I don't want to, you know, be absolute on that, but it should work. It's, basically, it's about running the engine. It, it char the charge generator runs off the alternator. It does not run off the battery. It, it 
needs the engine to be running in order to do its job. Uh, see here, anonymous attendee asks a good one. How much battery power is required to run an AC unit? Way too much. Uh, you can run AC off of batteries if you build a gigantic um, custom battery bank with a huge inverter. Uh, it's a ton of money, it's a ton of work, and it won't run very long. I don't recommend it with today's technology for, for most people. Running AC off of batteries is kind of a difficult and expensive proposition. Uh, let's see here. Is switching from uh, the AGM batteries to lithium a DIY or a dealer project? Uh, that depends on you. I did it myself. Um, I've got a guide on our website. If you go to airgear.store and you uh, look at the guide called um, Diary of a Lithium Battery Upgrade, you can read my story about what I did and how I decided whether or not it was something I could do myself. You do have to have a few tools. You've got to have some crimping tools. You've got to have some experience with 12 volt wiring. You've got to be a decent handyman. If, you can, if you've got all that, then yeah, it's a DIY project for most people. Uh, let's see here. Oh, so I'm just flipping through. I can't go to every question here. Um, if I switch from lead to acid to lithium, do I need to change my solar converter? I addressed that in one of the earlier slides. Um, and the question is maybe, depending on the model year of your Airstream. Um, again, check out that article in Airstream Life Magazine spring issue, uh, which answers all of that. Brent asks, if I'm hearing you right, lithium iron phosphate batteries are not the same as battleborne lithium. Uh, no, they are, because the battleborne batteries are not lithium ion, they are lithium iron phosphate. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Um, Ryan, can lithium batteries be installed in the existing inter external battery box? Absolutely. I recommend you look for batteries of the same form factor as the existing batteries. I covered that in an earlier slide. Um, but yes, that's the sweet spot. You can find batteries and those batteries will fit in the same place and they will have two to three times as much usable power as the lead acid batteries they're replacing. So it's definitely, a, that's what you want to do. Uh, Jeff asks, you may have covered this, but what kind of cost of inverter to go with? Uh, I'm not going to talk about inverters today. Sorry, it just gets into a whole nother area that we're just not going to have time for. Um, are lithium batteries connected in series or parallel? Uh, they are um, <laughs> I always get them mixed up. I believe it's parallel. In other words, they're 12 volt batteries. You want to connect them so that they output 12 volts. If you do them in series, they're going to output 24 volts. And I don't believe, at least Renergy does not recommend connecting their batteries in series. So you want to check with the manufacturer, but you, yes, you're going to get two 12 volt batteries and connect them together. Uh, let's see here. Um, What's the max watts the car generator will power? It will generate 1,000 watts peak. Um, your batteries will take probably more, more than three or 400 watts when they're charging. And that's if they're deeply discharged, they'll take much less as they get fuller. So a 1,000 watt car generator is much more power than you need to charge the batteries. Uh, Jonathan Schlue. Ah, John came in there. Jonathan is the, uh, found, the founder and inventor of the car generator. And he says, yes, car generator is fully compatible and runs perfectly with hybrid trucks and also pure EV vehicles. Thank you, Jonathan. Something I, I do not know. Uh, let's see here. Jim asks, how does a portable solar panel connect to a trailer that has no solar plug up front? If you have an Airstream that's 2016 or earlier, it does not have a solar port on the A-frame. Uh, we have a simple solution for that, and it's a, it's a, an adapter that allows you to plug it into the seven-way cable instead. It does exactly the same thing. It'll work either way. So you can buy that adapter cable from Air Gear. Uh, oh, no, we no longer sell it separately. Um, GoPower has it, though. GoPower has this seven-way adapter cable, and that would allow you to connect a solar panel to your stream without any rewiring at all. Um, let's see. David says, I've read that there's a risk of damaging the alternator if used to charge lithium batteries. Uh, I don't believe that's true. Um, the, uh, if you're, if you're charging a lithium battery directly from the alternator, but not with the car generator, the car generator, uh, will, will take care of that. So, you know, there's no, no issue there. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Thomas asks, is it coincidental that the solar power webinar was scheduled for Groundhog Day? <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it is coincidental. Yes, it is coincidental. <laughs> That's the weirdest question I've gotten today. We should probably send you a prize. Um, okay, lots more questions. I'll try to get to some more, but let's keep going with the presentation so we don't run out of time here. Um, uh, amp hour meter is the last thing that I really want to talk about here. Um, the voltage monitor, if you have that voltage monitor you see on the screen, it's a C-level tank monitor. And on the left side, it's got a battery button and it'll show you the voltage of the batteries. 
that will be of absolutely no use to you if you have lithium batteries, because lithium battery, you can't tell the state of charge from the voltage. So it's, it's just going to show you a number that really doesn't mean anything. You must upgrade to an amp hour meter. An amp hour meter is a totally different animal. What it does is measures the power going in and out of the battery very, very accurately. It's like a little bookkeeper. When power goes out, it records that. Power goes in, it records that. And so it knows the state of the battery's charge extremely accurately. Uh, there's lots of products out there that are amp hour meters. Trimetric makes one. Um, uh, Bogart Engineering actually is the company, but we like the Victron products. They have been great. And Victron makes a number of amp hour meters. The Smart Shunt is the one that we recommend because it's so easy to install. You basically just put it on top of the battery, connect the, the negative lines to it, and it's off and running. It doesn't require any internal wiring in the Airstream. Uh, you just um, monitor it using your phone. So the picture on the right there where it says device list, that's the image from my phone when I'm looking at the uh, Victron app. And I can see the battery voltage, which is nice, but as I said, it doesn't really tell you much. Current, it shows me right now it says zero on that one, because if I was using power, it would be a negative number. If I'm putting power in through solar, it would be a positive number. And then it shows me the state of charge of the battery within 1% accuracy. So if it says your battery has 67% of its power left, you can take that to the bank. 67% is, is going to be extremely accurate device. Uh, the Smart Shunt's a great little device. It costs about $130. There's also a $50 add-on that we strongly recommend you get that expands the Bluetooth range. Um, but this is definitely a DIY job if you just have the tools to cut and crimp wires. Um, not very hard to install, and you can always have a dealer do it for you, and they'll charge you probably an hour of time to do it. Um, love that device, the Smart Shunt from Victron. Again, it is available at Air Gear. Uh, we just started carrying it. We're currently out of stock today. I just checked this morning, uh, but we'll have more in a week. And we have a little button on there that says notify me when back in stock. So if you want to buy one from us, uh, just click that little green button, put your email address in, and we'll send you an email uh, when we have them back, which should be probably a week or so. So it's not that far away. Um, and finally, I want to warn you about some of the problems I see. Now, I get a lot of uh, calls from people or emails from Airstreamers, and um, they want to ask, about a quote they got from a dealership or a service center. It's just, geez, I went in there and I told them I wanted a couple of lithium batteries or I wanted some solar panels installed. And next thing I know, they gave me a quote for $10,000. And I'm not exaggerating. Um, I hear this frequently. Um, last one I saw was $13,000. And the guy, you know, calls me up and is just having a heart attack and going, is this what it costs? This is crazy. I didn't know it was going to be this expensive. The answer is no, it's not that expensive. What I see happening quite often is that the, the installers tend to kind of pack in. They figure, well, I'm in there. You're going to want this and this and this and this. And they start adding in a lot of upgrades. And you maybe not being totally savvy about what is a DC to DC charger? Why do I need a new battery disconnect switch? Not being sure, uh, not being an expert yourself, you sign off on the invoice and you pay a lot more money than you should. So I'm just going to point out a couple of things that I've been hearing from people um, that are commonly upsold to them that they don't necessarily need. First of all, unless you're a serious power user, as I pointed out before, 200 amp hours is going to be plenty. Even if you have an electric refrigerator, that's going to allow you to boontot for at least two or three days uh, without any solar at all. And if you have solar, you're going to get further. So more than 200 amp hours for most people is probably overkill. Your mileage may vary. Same thing with solar arrays. More than 400 watts on the roof or portable is a lot. Uh, I don't think most people will find the utility for extra. Again, if you're a serious boondocker, don't, don't pay any attention to this. But for most people, less than 400 watts will be plenty. DC to DC chargers. If you don't know what it is, you don't need it. Um, I'm just going to say very few people need a DC to DC charger. It's, it, it's got a very narrow use case. Um, I would not recommend it to 99% of people I know. And inverters of more than a thousand watt capacity. Generally, most people don't need that. The inverter that's built into an Airstream is a thousand watt capacity. It's, mo it's enough for most needs. It's certainly going to power your laptops. Um, it'll power your hairdryer on low, probably, although I wouldn't push the envelope on that one because you could burn out the inverter. Um, but it's good for most things. If you really, really want to run some big, heavy duty appliances like 
full-size household vacuum cleaner and a hair dryer, yeah, you're going to need a bigger inverter. It's going to get into a very expensive custom installation. So I don't recommend giant inverters for most people. People wonder what it costs. Well, two batteries, as I said, the batteries are running six, seven hundred bucks a piece. You can spend a little bit more, maybe eight hundred dollars a piece for the battery. So fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars for the batteries. But the labor typically almost doubles that. So I see a lot of three thousand dollar quotes or thereabouts from dealerships and service center to do a typical upgrade of two batteries to lithium, um, lithium iron phosphate. I personally did it myself for the cost of the batteries and the wires and a few tools. And that cost me just about $2,000 to do it myself. And that was when the batteries were $750 a piece and they're cheaper now. So um, ballpark prices, this is kind of what you're looking at for uh, what these things cost. For most Airstreamers, this is what I'd recommend. Two lithium iron phosphate batteries, 200 amp hours total. They're 100 amp hours each. They'll fit right in the battery box with the existing batteries. 200 watts of portable solar is going to be your cheapest option because it doesn't have to be installed. You can buy that for less than $1,000 and it's good to go. 200 watts of rooftop solar is going to cost you two or three times that. Um, I think portable solar is the way to go for most people because that way you can run it out on a cord where the sun is as opposed to helping the sun hits your airstream. You can put the panels where the sun is shining. And if you don't already have a thousand watt uh, inverter installed in your airstream, which does come with a lot of airstreams, if you don't have an inverter, I would recommend a 1000 watt pure sign inverter. Um, and that will allow you to plug in all your appliances that you typically will use. So that's kind of the, my recommendation for the sweet spot thing. This setup will get you through a long weekend of camping, even with cloudy days, and it can stretch to several days if there's sunshine for at least a few hours each day. So it's a really flexible, um, reasonably powerful system that will serve most of our needs. And again, look at yourself. If you're a hardcore boondocker, um, you know, you're running 15, you're working out of your Airstream and so is your partner and you're both working eight hours days and you're running the computers and you've got a laser printer and all that stuff. Okay, you might need more battery, you might need more solar. But for most people, I think this is what makes sense. All right, let's see a couple more questions here. I'm going to go back up to the top here. Uh, Martin asked if lithium batteries have a flammability issue. We answered that. They don't. Um, let's see here. Eric. Okay, I've got some time for questions. Good. Uh, Eric asks, any insight on the new Merlin flexible panels? I didn't know there were new ones. We've been selling Merlin flexible panels for a couple of years in our portable solar kit. They're excellent. Um, they are highly reliable. Um, they're resistant to shading. They are lightweight. I like them a lot. If you're talking about Merlin flexible panels for the rooftop, um, I think Merlin's a reputable brand. And uh, so I would probably go for them. Um, let's see here. Bobby says, I have rooftop installed with purchase 90 watt. So that came with your Airstream, a 90 watt system. Is it easy to purchase portable panels and simply plug them into the plug outside by the batteries? Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You can buy a portable system that's designed to plug into that solar charge port and just plug it in and go. As long as it's got a charge controller, our system comes with a charge controller, the one we sell on our site. And that will work perfectly in harmony with your existing rooftop panels and give you the best of both worlds. So great solution, easy to do. Uh, let's see here. Eric asks, we live in Michigan and have two battleborne lithium. Should I remove them and bring them inside in the winter or just let the battery shut off? I'm getting conflicting info. Yeah, that, that question gets a lot. I would refer you to a blog I wrote. Again, go to airgear.store and look in our blogs or search for the blog about why do my batteries keep going dead? Read that blog. It will answer that question in detail for you and you'll come to understand why the batteries are going dead and whether or not you need to bring them in. Short answer is... Um, if you have solar and the sun is shining, uh, then don't uh, flip the battery disconnect. Just let the sun keep the batteries charged. As long as you get enough sun, they'll be fine. Uh, let's see here. Mm, can't answer that one. Scott K says, you did talk about a Victron Smart Shunt, but I can't find it on YouTube. Uh, where can I find that video? That was probably, was that the last Ask Eric Beer that we talked yes, about? Ask yes. Uh, ask so ask if ask you go to our YouTube channel, um, batteries keep going dead. there is, there's a, there's a, well, air gear number two, why do my batteries keep going dead? Um, it's right at the top of our YouTube channel, uh, our playlist. Uh, so if you go look for the air gear store channel and you will find that video up there. Um, Rick asks, can we leave AGM batteries installed in some freezing temperatures with solar panels charging them? Yes, you can. Uh, they won't, a lead acid battery won't freeze 
unless it's completely discharged. And even then it has to be extremely cold for that to happen. So yes, you can leave them in there. If your solar is keeping them charged, they'll be fine. Uh, Clifford says, well, I need to change the converter of a 2018 Airstream if I install lithium. Yes, you will. Um, Daryl says, uh, he asked about the heaters. We already answered that. Anonymous attendee says, do I have to have an Airstream dealer do the lithium conversion or can any RV service center do the work? Uh, any competent RV service center can do the work. I prefer to go to the ones that specialize in RV, solar, and electric. There are lots of them out there, mobile technicians, as well as ones that you would drive to. Um, the average dealer is doing solar and electric on the side, as well as everything else they repair. The RV, solar, and electric guys are specialists. I would go to them. Uh, let's see here. Um, lots of questions here. Um, okay. Uh, do you sell power converters? Uh, we do not sell power converters. Um, there are companies on the internet that do that. Um, it's not necessarily a plug and play thing. It depends on the model year of your Airstream. I'm afraid you're going to have to do some research on that one. Um, let's see here. Michael's asked, is there a certain type of camper that might not need solar, such as someone who always wants full hookups? Yeah. If you always go to full hookups, then you don't need solar. I mean, this is really, solar is one of those things that kind of gives you some time away from hookups. But if you're always plugged in, um, you know, maybe you want it for when you're in storage, um, just to keep the batteries topped up in the wintertime. But other than that, no, you, you don't have to get solar. Um, you know, if you like full hookups, and hey, we all like full hookups, pretty pretty comfy. Um, so let's see here. Eric says, should you be bringing lithiums in when storing the winter coal? I think we kind of covered that one. Um, but they will be, the short answer is that the lithium batteries uh, will not freeze and they will not be damaged by the coal, but they should be kept charged. Um, let's see here. Deb asks, would you change to lithium battery if you don't plan to get solar? Oh, great question, Deb. Uh, yes, I would. Um, because lithium batteries, like I said, the power density means you're going to get two to three times as much power out of that same pair of batteries as you would have out of the lead acid batteries. And that by itself, in my opinion, is worth the upgrade costs. So solar or not, I think lithium makes a lot of sense for a lot of people if you want to have more than a night or two uh, without hookups. Uh, David says, dumb question. Well, we'll see about that. Do batteries charge when plugged into the tow vehicle? Oh, actually not a dumb question, David. Um, and the answer is yes, they do, but not very fast. Um, I've done some testing on tow vehicles. And what I find is that uh, when the engine is running, you get somewhere between four and seven amps uh, into the batteries uh, from the tow vehicle through the seven-way plug when you're, when you're plugged in. That's not, you know, it's nothing to sneeze at, but it's not huge. Um, what it means is that you might get like a half charge in a day of towing. Um, so it's something and it's good. Uh, it'll help you out. Um, it's just not, you know, not my first line of defense. Um, I would rather have solar and not have to count on the tow vehicle doing the job later. But by the time you plug in the tow vehicle and are towing home, well, you're, you're heading home. So you're going to probably plug in there or plug in at storage or something. So I don't, I don't know how many times you would actually really need to rely on that. Is that the DC to DC charger? Yeah, and that's why people get the DC to DC chargers. A DC to DC charger is the same thing with more power. So instead of charging it four to seven amps through the seven-way cord, they run a dedicated line from the alternator and they can charge it maybe 15 to 20 amps. Now that's a pretty good charge rate, but very few people really need that. So that's, that's what a DC to DC charger is. Uh, let's see here. A couple other questions we already answered. Oh, Lori says, this is fabulous. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Brent says, my Airstream dealer advised I need to change my converter uh, with my Battleborn batteries. I'm not sure where to look to determine what is needed. Uh, you, there is, oh, what's the guy? There's a guy who sells electric converters and his name escapes me. He's got a website. He's been out there forever. A lot of companies sell them. I mean, uh, you can do a Google search, but basically you're looking for um, a power converter that probably doesn't even have to be from the same manufacturer, but that will replace that one. That's going to be a place again, where you have to do some research on your own. If you're not comfortable with working with electricity, take it to a specialist and just have them do it. Um, Jonathan, uh, let's see, Christopher. Oh, Chris Cooper. Hey there, Christopher. Uh, with a portable solar panel, what's the recommended method to ensure camp site security? Oh, I wish I could do that for you. Um, 
honestly, Christopher, I don't, I don't have a good recommendation there. They're so easy to pick up. They're portable. That's the whole point. So unfortunately, um, I always make sure that I'm near my panels when I'm using portable solar. And that is like, as I said in the slide, that is one of the downsides of portable solar, you know, um, rooftop solar, nobody's going to steal it. So, you know, that's, that is uh, unfortunately a, a drawback. Uh, on the other hand, I would say I've never had anything stolen at a campground. And I certainly, like if I'm at a, like a WBCCI rally and there's lots of other people around at the rally, I don't worry about it. Then I'll go out of sight because there's so many people looking out for my stuff. And, you know, club people are generally very honest and forthright people who would, would you know, wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem. Uh, let's see here. Um, Debbie. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um my 2020 fridge runs on battery and propane. When I boondock, can I switch over to propane? Absolutely. If you still have a propane refrigerator, use that when you're boondocking. That will save a tremendous amount of power. That's what it's for. Uh, I think you're very lucky. We have a 2020. We have the propane refrigerator. For boondocking, there's no substitute. It's kind of a bummer that Airstream switched to all electric without giving you the option to get propane. Um, because now it's it's electric only and you just have to live with it. So yes, if you have propane, definitely use that mode when you're boondocking. Um, let's see here. Uh, Eric says, when charging via the portable panels, is the power being supplied shown on the shunt? Yes. Everything that goes to the battery in or out goes through that shunt. That's the wiring that you need to do. You take all the loads, all the wires, you connect them to the shunt one end, and then you check the other end of the shunt to the battery. So everything goes through that shunt. And that's why it gives you a very accurate measurement of what the state of charge of the battery is. Uh, let's see here. Um, Brian, let's see here. Uh, Brian says, with lead acid and portable solar, if the batteries need to be replaced due to age, is less lead acid okay? Yeah, I mean, you can stick with lead acid. And as I said, it has the advantage of being less expensive. Um, so when it comes time for your batteries to be replaced, if you have lead acid, that's the time for you to think, well, is lithium going to be beneficial to me? Am I the kind of person who is going to be off hookups for a few days? And I would make that decision at that point. But for a lot of people, no, if you don't need the capacity, then go with the cheap batteries. Lead acid is a proven technology and it costs a lot less. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, Bruce points out something that I didn't mention, that uh, lithium batteries charge faster than lead acid. This is true. However, um, it's only true when you've got a really good power source. For example, the airstream's plugged in, you're using car generator, uh, or you've got a ton of solar going on, like a big solar array, and there's full sun. Otherwise, on solar, you're usually going to have less power going in than the batteries can ultimately accept. So for example, lead acid batteries say it can take 100 watts. Just, I'm just making up numbers right now, okay? Or maybe 200 watts. That's all it's willing to take. Okay, great. If you had solar capacity and you were generating 300 watts of power, those batteries would already be maxed out. They'd be charging as fast as they could. Lithium batteries will charge a bit faster. From actual monitoring, I know my two Renogy batteries will charge at typically 300 watts. And when they're really discharged, they'll charge at 400 watts. That's pretty fast. It is true that lithium charges faster, but it's only true when you got the power to back it up. So let's see here. Um, okay, we've got a couple more questions and then we're gonna wrap up here. Uh, Andre says, who are the top lithium battery makers? Um, Battleborn is probably the most famous name. It's the one that Airstream installs. You probably won't go wrong with Battleborn. Um, like I said, Renogy is probably number two. Beware, do not go on Amazon and buy the cheapest lithium iron phosphate battery you can find on Amazon. There are some really cheap ones out there. I would not buy them. They don't have good BMSs. They, there's nobody standing behind them. Um, ugh, you know, stick, stick with one of the bigger brands. Um, let's see here. Um, somebody asked about, two people asked about wiring. When, we, when I did the lithium uh, conversion to, on my Airstream from lead acid, I had to make a lot of wiring changes and, and people are wondering why. It's not because of the lithium batteries, it was actually because of the position of the battery posts. Um, the wires I had didn't reach because of the way that I had to put the batteries in. So I had to make some new wires. That's the only reason that the wiring changed. And I documented that in my diary of a lithium battery upgrade 
it's all explained there with pictures. So again, if you go to airgear.store and you look at the uh, diary of a lithium battery upgrade, you'll you'll see the details on that. Um, let's see here. Um, <laughs> Shirley says, where can I get your shirt? Uh, this is the Airstream Life Store hooded tee. We no longer sell it. Sorry, they're they're all gone. <laughs> but but thanks for asking. I love this shirt. Uh, let's see here. What else have we got? Um, oh, Deb says she used a bike cable to lock her portable panels, by the way. So for what that's worth, bike cable. I mean, it would deter somebody from picking up a panel and walking away. They would at least have to cut the bike cable. So there's that. Um, let's see here. Russ and uh, Russ asks, you missed the first part of the Zoom meeting. If you missed part of the Zoom meeting, where will you be able to access the recording? We will send you a link if you because you're registered. You will get an email later with the link to the video location so you can watch the replay. Um, let's see. Can anonymous attendee says, can you run an AC unit while uh, running the car generator? Uh, no, AC is beyond the capability of the car generator. Um, the car generator is limited to a thousand watts. AC pulls a lot more power than that. So that is one of the things you won't be able to do that in the microwave. Um, let's see. I think that's all the questions I can get to. I'm sorry, I answered 57 questions. I left 14 of them I couldn't get to. <laughs> I feel like an auctioneer here. <laughs> like, I got a question, I got a question. But hopefully we got y'all uh, mostly educated on here. Uh, remember, we are airgear.store. We do these things uh, you know, because we wanna help the Airstream community. That's what we're all about. We're educators, we do real research. And uh, we do invite your questions, try to answer them as, as often as we can. Ask at airgear.store. Uh, if we get enough questions on a particular topic, we will uh, try to address it in a future webinar or video. Thank you for coming. I hope you learned something here today. And uh, for me and Tofi, uh, we, we definitely appreciate you guys very, very much.